the power of leaving a woman alone and giving her time to choose you. That is a very important lesson and is one that most men have a hard time learning. And I hope that you can learn it like the guy did that we're gonna talk about today. So this guy left me a comment under one of my videos and he had a situation whereby he'd gone out a few times with the woman, she flaked on a date, and then she decided to break it off with him for reasons we'll get into. And so he just decided, you know what? I'm gonna just say, hey, sorry that you don't feel that way. And if you wanna you know, go out sometime in the future, hit me up. And how this ends is pretty great. And this guy was questioning if some of the stuff that I teach in this channel is actually working on women. But as you'll see, based on what we go through, you'll see that this in fact does work. But I'm gonna stop along the way and talk about things that he could have done better and things he can do to make sure that he doesn't mess up again, either with this girl or other women in the future. Hi, I'm Harry Wilmington. I help guys out with dating stuff. If you need help, go to introvertdatingsuccess.com. Check out my Introvert Dating Success Academy community, whereby you can get all my programs and eBooks. All right, let's get into it. So this guy left quite a few messages because I, I wrote him back asking for more specific details. But he said, I've listened to your videos and I'm taking your advice. This woman I was dating for a month. I didn't text her that much, only twice a week. She flakes on one of our dates and says that she feels I'm too quiet and uh, says we didn't have much communication. Are your videos wrong or am I doing something wrong here? So first off, I love it when you guys come to me and ask me, hey, so are you sure the stuff you're talking about works? Because if nothing else, I have years of experience I got a ton of videos and a ton of various other things that can give you reasons as to why I feel the stuff that I'm giving you is in fact going to work, but I don't mind being challenged on it because all it does for me is allow me to help you further see how it is that the things that I'm putting out there can actually help you in your situation, even if you think it's totally different. So, but when you guys ask me questions, I always wanna get further details. So, I asked this guy, uh, I said, she says I'm too quiet. How often were you talking when seeing her in person? Was she doing all the talking or were you contributing? Also, when you would reach out to text her, what were you texting? How often were you asking her out and how many dates did you go on? What date did you set up that she flaked on and what was her reason or did she give a counter offer date? So these are all important details that when you guys are telling me these stories, you might not think they're all that important, but trust me, the more detail I have, I'm able to better determine what is probably going on in her head and what the situation actually is that you're in. So he wrote me back and he said, I would ask her questions and make comments on her answers. I would text her to ask her on dates and see how she's doing. I was asking her out every two weeks. She flaked on the third date. She said she was feeling like we're both too quiet and that it wouldn't work out. I said, okay, thank you for letting me know. And if you change your mind, I'll be available to talk. Then I asked her, why do you think I'm quiet? She says, our dates end fairly quick to the point she's surprised at how fast they go. Now, this is all very important information. So we're gonna go back over it and stop along the way to see what she's saying, what he's doing, and where things possibly took a turn for the worse. So he starts off by saying, I would ask her questions and make comments on her answers. Nothing wrong there. He says, I would text her to ask her on dates and see how she's doing. Now, I don't know if these things were happening at the same time, because ideally you'd be like, hey, so-and-so, how you doing? Great, hey, by the way, I wanna take you out. Hopefully, he's not being that guy that's asking her out on a date and then a few days later, hey, how you doing? What's up? Because outside of asking a woman on a date, you're not really trying to do too much communicating via text during the early parts of dating. Now, with that said, there's a caveat, which is that I'm assuming that if you are trying to date a woman in those first few weeks, you're gonna be asking her out once a week. So because you're asking her out once a week, you're basically texting her once and then seeing her once. And then when you're seeing her, the, you know that first date is probably no more than 90 minutes, two hours at most, but don't try to go that long. But your second and third dates are probably gonna be three to four hours long, depending on the activity. So that is more than enough time to have communication with the person to where I would assume that you wouldn't need to have more texting with her. But then he says the thing here where he says, 
I was asking her out every two weeks. So then my question has to become, what was the delay? Now, I don't know this guy's situation. Maybe she has a job and he has a job whereby they don't get that much free time. And so they're only available to see each other during like every other week or so. But ideally, ideally you're setting up dates once a week. If you're not, if, if she's available to do that and you're available to do that and you're not doing that, then yeah, to the woman, that's gonna seem like a very long time between dates for communication because it'd be different if you were seeing her every week, then she'd be hearing from you via text once a week and then seeing you in person. So she'd be seeing you basically or, or, or contacting you twice a week. If you're literally asking her on a date every two weeks, then for most women that are trying to get to know you and trying to potentially get to know other guys, you're not putting in enough time in front of her to have as much of an impact as you'd like. Now, obviously, again, if your situation is different where you can't see each other, that's not going to typically deter a woman that has high interest. I'm just saying you have a better shot at building her interest quicker if you're going on a date with her once a week, ideally during a weekday. So I don't know why that's not happening because you didn't leave that in your message, but for the rest of you watching, you're really trying to set it up to where you see her once a week. That's gonna give you a better shot at being able to get in front of her face more and to see her more. And again, once a week is enough. You don't need to do twice a week, three times a week until she starts suggesting it. Otherwise it's just overkill, right? Okay, so then uh, he said that part, and then, so he said that he's been dating her for a month. They've had two dates and then she flaked on this one. So that means that, because in a month's time, he, they should have been on four or five dates by now. So the fact that it's only been two dates, assuming he's asking her out every two weeks, that's not a really great sign. So then he says he asked her out for the third date and that's when she flaked, right? Now, she says, I'll be, I'll, to be honest, hey, I'll give her the props that she actually gave seemingly legitimate reasons for wanting to drop out a little bit, you know, because she said she feels like they're both too quiet. So I, that means like on top of them not texting all that much between dates or, and, and not that I'm saying you should be heightening texting. I'm saying you gotta know your situation. If you're seeing each other every two weeks and that's all you can do, it's probably fine to send out another text the, the week that you're not seeing or just say, hey, what's up? Or to send an emoji or something like that, just because you wanna have a little bit. Like I, I'm not for you guys being texty, uh, chatty Cathy's on text all the time. But if you know that you're not gonna see somebody between like two or three weeks at a time, then one or two texts here and there aren't the worst things in the world. Just be mindful of that, all right? So, but yeah, he, she says that, so they were quiet. That means they weren't talking a lot between dates, but also how are they on the date? He's thinking the conversations were going great. He's asking questions. She's giving answers. He's responding. But like, how long is that dialogue? How many things is she saying versus how many is he saying? I know if you're with a woman that's not talking a whole lot, you may think, okay, I'll just keep asking her questions. And that could come off as you talking too much because you're asking all these questions using all these words only for her to give like two or three word answers. That's also not great. But that also speaks to a woman that is either potentially nervous or potentially doesn't know where her interest is with you, but it's leaning more towards not being all that interested, which is again, not a great thing in the world. So, you know, a woman should be bringing her weight also to the other side of the conversation. She should be asking you questions about yourself. She should be asking you about your life and inquiring into what you're about and what makes you tick. If you find as a guy that you're the one asking all the questions and she's answering, but not following up with questions of her own, then again, that speaks to either a woman that doesn't have good communication skills or social skills, or she's really not all that interested and she's just trudging along through the date, which again, is not a great sign. So then he says, he said, okay, thank you for letting me know. And if you change your mind, I'll be available to talk. Guys, that should be your in-game sentence for any woman that actually has the gall to come to you to say, hey, I'm not feeling it. It's been some great dates, but it's just, I'm not feeling it on my end. You never wanna go bitter, all right? Because here's the thing, you never know what bridges you could be burning. For, and I know as a younger guy watching this, you may not understand what that means, right? Let's say for example, you're in your 20s and you go on a date with a woman and she, you know, you think it's a great date. You have two or, two or three dates with her. And then all of a sudden you ask her out for that third or fourth date. And she says, you know what? I, I think you're a great guy, but I'm just not feeling it. And you decide you're tired of all these girls that are telling you you're not worth crap and that you they don't want to date you. And you're going to just let her have it. Oh, well, you're a skank anyway. And how dare you? And you don't know a good guy when he's coming and blah, this is that. And you think, 
off of there. Good riddance. Now, 20 version year old you is going to be like, it is what it is. Who gives a crap, right? The, I, there have been a couple of times in my life where I have run into somebody that I previously dated, whether it's at an event or in your case it might be you turn 35 and you're going up for a job promotion or you're trying out for a new job and the place you go to the president of the company or the person that owns the company just happens to be the person that used it that you went on three dates with and then made fun of her and called her names because you felt some kind of way about it and now she's the one that is going to determine if you get the job or not and that kind of stuff happens especially if you're in the same city for a many number of years that can happen very easily so even if you feel like they're in the wrong or they don't totally get you or you want another shot at this, it does not behoove you to act all butthurt at the point that a woman says, eh, I'm not interested. But I also say that because sometimes a woman might be in a space in that moment when you're asking her for that third or fourth date where she's just burned out of dating. You know, she dated you and two other guys and those two other guys also didn't work out and it's you're quiet, you're awkward. There seems to be a weird interaction going on. And so she's just like, you know what? I just need a break from dating. I need to reassess what I'm doing. I need to stop. And it can be very well, it's partially about you, but it's more so about her and she might need that break. But that doesn't also mean that at the point that she's had time to herself and to reassess where she's at with dating and rethink back on the date you guys went on, the conversations that she actually did enjoy, even though she wasn't showing it, and think to herself, man, I wanna give so-and-so another shot. I hope that the door is still open for me to do that. And that also happens quite frequently. I've had girls I've dated before that came back, hey, Harry, how you doing? Wanna see what's up with you? And then we, we talk for a little bit. We go back up for some more dating, some more hookups. Like that can happen if you are able to not appear butthurt when a woman comes to you and says things like, I don't know if this is gonna work out, whatever, right? So his answer was actually perfect when he said, um, thanks for letting me know if you change your mind, I'll be available to talk. Now, I would have changed the bit of the end. I would have said, uh, I would have said something to, uh, to the effect of, uh, if you change your mind and I'm still available, then we can talk. Because I don't want to give women the impression that I'm going to be sitting around just waiting on them. I want them to know that there may be a door open, but that door could close if I happen to find another option, which I am out there actively pursuing, you know? And that allows women to have an even shorter time frame of deciding, oh man, a, it makes you seem like you're not as needy as she possibly thought you were. And B, it makes you think, okay, I'm going to time crunch. Do, do I really, am I really trying to actually give up the chance to date this guy? Like, is there things that are happening so bad that I shouldn't date him? Or, or could I be my feelings? Could I be tripping? Could I be my period? Am I having a bad day? Let me like not take too long to see if I want to ask this guy back out again, right? And so you'll see what happens in a minute with that. But then he says, I asked her, why do you think I'm quiet? And I respect that because, hey, we're a real talk guy. I, I think none of the guys actually would do a follow up and like, hey, so, you know, I'm just curious, what was it about our interaction that maybe didn't work so I'll know better for next time? So because you were able to initially respond and, and not act butthurt, then when you ask this question, she's going to feel open to actually sharing the answer since you weren't lashing out at her for saying she wasn't interested. And then she said, our dates end fairly quickly to the point that she's surprised at how fast they go. Now, I tell you guys, date number one, Date number one shouldn't be more than 90 minutes. This is the teaser trailer, getting to know you, you, her getting to know a little bit about you and what you're about, and then at the height of enjoyment, you cut it short. That should be the first date. The dates after the first date should be a little bit longer. Now, longer could be, depending on the activity, it might be like three, four, maybe four and a half hours, because you might be, you know, it might go to a park, might go to a movie, you might go to a comedy show or some kind of activity that takes a little bit of time, and that's totally fine. You still don't want to stretch it out too far in the day. The only the only exception to that, of course, is if you happen to end up going to her place that night and banging her brains out. If somehow that manages to happen, Either you're probably going to stay over or at the very least, you're going to hook up with her. You're going to cuddle a little bit afterwards. And that could stretch the date from being like three hours to like five or six hours. All right. But again, you're not really trying to spend an absorbent amount of time with her in the beginning, but not so short that she's like, oh, that just that the, the date's just over like that. That feeling is fine for the first date. Ideally, for those subsequent dates, you're making them a little bit longer. And it's not that you're trying to like stay for eight hours on end until she's totally satisfied with her time with you. But it is saying that you can stretch those out a little bit more. And you have to think, what she's saying, that end it fairly quickly, what does that mean to her? Does that mean that she wanted to converse a little more? Does that mean that she thought she'd have more time to just kind of chill with you? Like, what does that mean, you know? So anyway, 
You go through all that, right? And uh, I hadn't had time to answer him because I was going to make a video, respond to all that stuff. And then he left this message. He says, I have an update. She contacted me back today wanting to go on a date with me. I guess your stuff does work after all. Now, this guy was, wrote to me and he left a comment on my page like a day ago. He, he left the, um, the first one two days ago about um, when she was flaking and feeling too quiet or whatever. That was two days ago. So all he did was like say, hey, if you want to contact me, I'll be available for that. And then he left her alone for two days. And then she, or I'm assuming two days. And then she contacted him. So let's say two to three days, right? So what I tell you guys, I tell you guys, the hardest part is going to be you as a guy thinking that a woman is going to actually come back. Like the whole no contact thing, guys get freaked out about it because they'll think, well, I got to, no contact means go no contact for X amount of days and then I'll hit her up again. And that's not what that means. No contact means you go full no contact until she decides to reach out to you. And no contact for you should be you checking out other prospects that do want to contact you. But as you see here, he left the woman alone. He left the opening of like, hey, if you want to go out again and, you, and I'm available, hit me up, you know? And so that's exactly what happened. She hit him up and said, hey, I want to go on another date. Like, so, so, and this is stuff that I teach you guys. This is stuff I talk about on this channel all the time. It's the stuff I talk about in my program, the Introvert Dating Success Academy uh, uh, community, where you can talk to me and other guys in the community about things that you're going through in your dating life. And it's only a pizzly monthly fee, but it's, it's, it's got all my programs and eBooks in it. You'll learn a whole bunch of stuff in it. But suffice to say, guys, ultimately what this proves is that if you are not pushing your agenda to have to see her, regardless of how interested you are, and you're able to like let her sit with herself and be left alone to think about things, there's a better chance of her coming back to you that way than you trying to say, come see me, please come see me, why aren't you talking to me, we'll be perfect together, blah, 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 blah. Now, with that said, so this girl wants to go on another date, right? So what should this guy do going forward now that he's got her back? Well, for one, I would say this, start planning dates once a week. If, if you're able to manage that, it shouldn't be every other week. You should be playing a date once a week. Ideally, you're doing it Sunday through Thursday until such a time as she says Fridays or Saturdays, unless, of course, Fridays and Saturdays are the only days you guys can see each other. Then obviously that would be an exception to the rule. But you want to keep it to weekdays because we want her coming to you saying, hey, I know I saw you on Wednesday, but what are you, what are you doing on Friday or Saturday? That lets you know that her interest is building, okay? And then, yeah, beyond that, like, I don't think you need to necessarily up your texting game because clearly she's coming back and wanted to see you. So it wasn't that you, were text, you weren't texting enough. It really just boils down to if you're, if you're only seeing her every other week, that's not technically enough time to, for her to interact with you. So try to make more interactions happen. And then on these dates, make sure that you're asking her questions, but don't do it in like a news reporter style, like, hey, so tell me about this. And what do you think about this? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it should be more of a natural flow. You should be focusing on making her laugh and making her feel giddy and good about herself. And you should be doing like all the masculine, gentlemanly things on dates that are required of you in order to attract this woman. You know, if you need help with like examples of what those kind of things are, I got thousands of videos on my YouTube, but also my Introvert Dating Success Academy will literally walk you through how to go from meeting a woman to dating her all the way up to actually getting her to her in a relationship in the span of dating her for three months. It is, it is tried, true, and tested. I've used it time and time again. The people that I, are my students have used it time and time again to get into great, positive relationships with wonderful women, okay? Lastly, guys, understand this. I always stress that I, I'm glad you guys come here to learn this knowledge because you may be a guy that was like me and was awkward in dating, but understand there are women out there that are also awkward too. And so she may just be an awkward woman that doesn't know how to come up with conversation, doesn't quite know how to say the things that she wants or what's bugging her right in the moment. And so understand women have their own learning curve too. You as the guy are ultimately the one that's supposed to be leading this situation. So you gotta figure out ways to get her out of her shell and to make her be more of a conversationalist in a way that's gonna give you the information you need to really help you succeed with her if you're trying to date her long-term. So hopefully this helps you out. I'm glad to see that you were able to realize that my stuff is now working for you. Just again, keep those those tips in your head, try to hit her up once a week for a date and see if that doesn't help you in terms of getting her to be more interested. Also, also it, by the third or fourth date, you should start being, start trying to um, do things that, that initiate going to a more physical realm, whether that's 
first kisses or trying to get her to your place or whatever, like those things should be happening on your part. If she's not already hinting at those things, that's fine. You as the guy still need to be making those moves just so she'll know that that desire is out there and that way she'll know that you see her as more than just trying to be a potential friend in a friendship, all right? So hopefully, guy, this helps you all out. And for the rest of you guys, be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, check out my program, the Introvert Dating Success Academy community at introvertdatingsuccess.com. And if you guys have any questions you want me to answer on one of these shows, you can write to me at harry at introvertdatingsuccess.com or leave a comment under any of my videos. I check Check them every day to answer questions just like I did for this guy. Thanks for watching. I'm Harry Wilmington, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace. You's a bad boy, but you can't stop. Won't stop. Let's you are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high class man. You are high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man.